for another project that I'm working on, I need to do some two-sided milling. That means uh, first doing some of the milling from the top and then flip the object around and then mill the bottom side, but of course now from the top. Uh, and you need to do that uh, and fix the, uh, the stock in a way and I will use the pin type. And here's uh, the result that came out uh, and you can see, probably you can see, that it is a uh, square uh, ending up being a circle on top and then on the bottom there is a sphere uh, milled into it. And this is of course impossible to do from one side. So what I have been doing is milling this piece here all the way down to this edge here and then flip it around and then do this one and then the profile to cut it out. I'll go in now and show you how I did it in Fusion 360 and then uh, we'll later see how it works on the machine. So just to recap how I drawn it, I'll put the timeline back all the way and then step by step, uh, first I drew up the uh, sketch where I have the square and I have uh, the circle and then two circles indicating where I want to have the pins uh, to turn the object around. Uh, next I put in a, a, a construction plane uh, an offset construction plane on which I made the drawing of the circle and then I used the loft command to uh, make a body that started as a square and ended as a circle. And I added uh, some width to the object here in the bottom uh, and this is also where I want to uh, kind of make my uh, the intersection between what I will be milling from the top and what I will be milling from the bottom. Next, uh, I added the sphere from the bottom, I cut it out, so now you have a hole through the whole object and then this nice uh, ball-shaped uh, curvature here. And then finally, I added the uh, two uh, cylinders here, which is indicating where I want to have the pins sitting. Uh, and the pins can go into the spoil board uh, and then into the stock. Uh, you can also put a piece of pay, uh, material on top of your spoil board so you don't bore directly into your spoil board. Uh, that is actually what I uh, intend to do. Then if you go to the cam uh, section of the program, I have made uh, a top cut and a bottom cut. Uh, and I start out with an adaptive clearing uh, and then uh, I also have uh, a drilling of the hole uh, and that is, um, I will actually put this out as a separate decode, so I will use the drilling. First, I will drill the holes here uh, in the spoil board, and secondly, if you envision you have the stock around here, then I will be drilling the same two holes in the stock, and then I will be doing the adaptive clear clearance. And then uh, whenever that is done, I can take it uh, off the spoil board, turn it around and then mount the two uh, dowels uh, that will be bought into the spoil board and into the stock and then mount it upside down and then do the milling uh, from this side here. So essentially this is what I will be going out. So I'll be going out with three decos. This one to mill the holes in the spoil board and the stock and this one to clear the top and then a combination of uh, this one and this one, which is uh, uh, the adaptive clearing, will take care of this one and the contour will then make a cutout. Essential part here of how to set it up is um, how to secure that you actually don't go any further than you need. So here on the, the, uh, the, um, the layers here, I've essentially said that the bottom layer of the first, the top, is going only down to this level here, which is equivalent to where my uh, my my uh, box starts uh, and the, uh, the 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 curvature ends. So that's what will happen here. So the first part will only go all the way down there, and for the second part, the uh, the milling here will will just mill out this one, but this one here is actually the one that mills out. And uh, here I have asked the, uh, the system to go uh, further depth 
in order to secure uh, that uh, we actually get all the way through uh, the material. And I'm looking at here, you have bottom height is a minus three, so it actually goes all the way an extra uh, piece down. And I've also made the, um, the um, tabs fairly big, as you can see here. And that's of course because if I, with the ball nose, go further down, uh, and then the uh, tab will be down here, then it will not be holding anything. So I actually added quite a bit of height to the tab, but this part down here will of course be nothing because it was milled out from the top, but you will have enough to hold it here. So just uh, before we go out on the machine, I think it's uh, it would be worthwhile uh, doing a simulation of the different tool paths. Start with the uh, milling here. It's of course a fairly quick one, so you just mill. Okay, and now we have it upside down. So that was the milling of the two uh, holes that you make in the stock and the spoil board. And then if we take the adaptive clearing, close this one, and take the adaptive clearing here, and speed it up a little bit. We'll put, remove the tool pass, but add the stock, and then play, and speed it up. So this is fairly high speed. And I have asked it to go down three millimeter uh, at a time. So it's gonna do around, I believe, three uh, cycles to get all the way uh, down to where it needs to be before it's uh, done. So that was it. And then if we turn the object around and we uh, then will be, oh, we have to close here. We will take these two here and do a simulation of those. So we start with the uh, milling of the uh, ball shaped pocket here. And maybe we can increase the speed a little bit like that. And the same story here, it's uh, three millimeters at a time, and it will go out and secure that we get a very nice pocket here. And then there was the, the carve out and all the tabs, you can't see it because the stock is not. So let's go out and see how it, it paints out on the machine. So now I have mounted a piece of scrap board that I will be drilling the uh, dowel holes into, and then I will mount the uh, workpiece on top of it and there, then I will be doing uh, the milling first on one side and then flip it around and do the second side. Before drilling the uh, two holes in the spoil board uh, I will just set C height to zero here. And then we are ready to drill the two holes. So next, next we set the uh, C height on the workpiece. And then we will be drilling the holes here. Yeah, so next step will be to uh, do the carving of, uh, of uh, one of the sides and then uh, later on we will turn the piece around and use the holes for the dowels. Yeah, and here you can see I have uh, loaded the code for uh, the piece. Uh, 
and then let's run it. Yeah, so this is the final result of the first side, and I think it looks really nice. And uh, this somewhat interesting shape going from the circle to the square. Then next is uh, to take it off and turn it around. Yeah, and so we are ready to run the uh, second half. Yeah, so now it's finished and we have the tabs that actually worked, so the piece is pretty solid sitting there. I'll take it out and then let's uh, dust it off and see how it looks. Yeah, so here it is and I think it's uh, fairly obvious to see the uh, ball shape inside here and you have the thickness there and then you have the uh, shape here going from the square to the circle. So I think this came out really nice and uh, a good way, an easy way to do the uh, two-sided milling using the two pins here.